What's up, fellas? Uh, now living in Montana, kind of settled in temporarily. Hopefully I can get back into making these videos a little bit more often. Um, yeah, just going to be a quick one, but I'm going to try to be more accountable about it. i um, been having a lot of success in my training, and you know I, I would like to talk about the things that have led to my success. So I'll try to stay on top of it, but just a quick one today. Um, just kind of off of something, a discussion I was having with someone on Instagram um, in response to something I put on my story in one of those Q&As. Um, someone was asking about these uh, physical modalities for recovery, like cupping, scraping, massage, acupuncture, stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I basically, I said, the fact that the literature isn't really behind these things past the placebo effect, and there isn't even an agreed upon mechanism of action, right? So coming in with a healthy amount of skepticism, that aside, this they should never be your primary means of addressing either a recovery deficit or an injury, right? Um, and the analogy I gave on my story was if you have if you're in a boat and there's a leak in your boat, you should plug the leak in the boat long before you worry about what cup you're going to use to to shovel the water out, right? Um, that's basically saying that if you are accruing more fatigue than you can deal with. Uh, what strategy you're going to use to dissipate the fatigue should be secondary to reducing that incoming fatigue. That should be the first thing you do, right? So it's like if you are chronically banging the shit out of your lower back, um, long before you go get a massage for your lower back every week, you should be dialing back the training volume that is hitting it. Um, and some of a couple of people push back a little bit on that analogy. That's fine. It really wasn't that well thought out. There's nothing. Uh, I'm not very emotionally tied to the uh, the boat, um, but I have used for a couple of people who are more visual learners, and my apologies if uh, someone watching this is a little bit more advanced, they're like, oh, this is some really basic shit, I don't need an analogy for this, that's okay. I find some people are a little bit more visual, so maybe this will be helpful in form informing training decisions, maybe it won't, um, but what I've always told people is you have a barrel, right? Like people talk about, oh, um, fatigue, you know, you're a glass, right, and that glass fills up and your body can't differentiate between training stressors and outside stressors. You only have so much stress, and the stress is the water, and eventually that, that cup will overflow. Um, what I like to think about is I like to think about a barrel because it's, it's much cooler and much more manly. Um, you know, and that's the, the barrel is what contains stressors, right? Um, you have a hose coming into the barrel that's filling it up with water. Right, and we can just look at the hose and we can say, this is our, our training routine. Obviously stressors are going, like outside life stressors are going to contribute, but we're just gonna assume those are outside of your control. Um, and we're just gonna kind of put those aside. We're gonna say that these, this is your training program and this is the amount of stress you're applying on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. It's filling up the barrel. At the top of the barrel, there's a hole. So water can drain out, right? And this is your ability to recover, right? And if the water coming in is going faster than its ability to go out, it's going to spill out the top. And that might, that might manifest as overtraining, that might manifest as an injury, it might manifest as chronic pain. Um, it's going to manifest in some sort of dysfunction. At the very least, it'll manifest in poor progress if you're training, out training your ability to recover consistently. Um, so when we're looking at this, we kind of have two things we can look at, right? We have that input rate. Um, the hose, right? We can dial up the amount that's coming in, we can dial it down, we can also kind of use strategies where for a while it's going to be at a rate faster than we can recover from, but then it has to be followed by a slower rate so that way the, the drainage is going to be faster so that way we can let down the level that we've built up, right? So someone like Chad Wesley Smith who kind of does a three week up, one week down, a functional overreaching strategy where you intentionally go past your maximum recoverable volume for a week and then take a deload week to try to get like a rubber banding super compensation effect. That would be the strategy of, okay, we're going to blast the hose in one up till it's at the top and then we're going to give it a little bit for our natural recovery rate to drain down, right? And then on the other side of the coin, we do have some, some influence over the rate that the water drains, right? We can make that hole a little bit bigger by being in a caloric surplus, sleeping enough, being in good aerobic condition, maintaining a high NEAT, uh, maintain, minimizing life stressors, right? These things are going to make that hole a little bit bigger, which means we can pump a little bit more through the other side. 
Um, but that's kind of how I go about visualizing it. I, I know it's really basic, and I, I apologize if uh, people were expecting this to be, to be some high-level thing. But when you're looking at something complex like an injury, you want to look at the, the simple side of things first, which is just the, the rate that we're decaying fatigue and the rate that we're like accruing fatigue, right? And fiddle with those things long before we look at little specific, oh, this is the biomechanical reason I was moving like slightly wrong or oh this is the like sm small intervention I need to make and I'm oh I'm missing this accessory and that's why I hurt or oh I need to do cupping and this is why I hurt long before you even think about those things we need to look at these basic variables um, and the barrel All right, uh, extremely minor and meaningless addendum I was re-watching this before I post it uh, the hole in the barrel where the water's coming out and that's the fatigue dissipating it's at the bottom of the barrel not at the top because then you couldn't drain water past a certain point if it was at the top i don't know why i said that the hole is at the bottom of the barrel